Hey guys, welcome back to Bird Nest Farms. On this episode, we're going to go ahead and start pulling the honey supers. So as we talked about last week, we've been looking around watching the goldenrod. And as soon as it starts to blossom and flower, that's whenever we want to try to pull off all of our honey supers. The goldenrod has a real strong smell to it, and we just don't want that in the honey. And it also allows the bees time to kind of catch up before they go into winter. So I'll take you for a real quick spin through the yard before we start pulling honey, and uh, we'll jump right into the video. Here's a real quick shot of that goldenrod that we've been watching for the last few weeks. As you can see, it's just starting to flower back here in the back side there. And, uh, and that goldenrod really produces a strong smell. You can actually smell it as you're walking past the, the beehives. So we definitely do not want that smell in our honey so that's why we're starting to pull it right now maybe about a week or so later than ideally but uh, anyway i wanted to give you a shot of what that goldenrod looks like and kind of explain why we try to pull the honey supers when we do all right so here's a real quick tour of the new bee yard so we're transitioning all of the bees from the other bee yard to here so we've got about we've got most of them here, but we still got some hives over there in the old bee yard. So just real quick before we start pulling, if you remember last week we lost several hives. As you can see here, 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 there's several hives that were lost and several that need to be moved over here. So real quick, we've got one, two, three, four, five supers on that one. And then this other one right here, we've got three supers one back over there uh, one two three four four in the back in liam's hive and one over there in claire's hive so this is a real quick walk around of the new bee yard before we start pulling honey okay so we're set up on the second honey production hive not really sure how that last video turned out because the camera got too hot and shut down on me so basically what we're doing here is we're taking a, a deep, a lid to a deep, flipping it upside down and taking an empty honey super and putting it here on the bottom. Then as we go through here, we'll shake the bees out back into the colony and um, try to keep the bees here. We don't want to pull the queen with us or anything like that. Keep as many of the bees here as we can. And uh, what we'll do as we go through here is we'll pull them, take them over there, you know, a couple hundred yards away and um, try to get as many, many bees out as we can. Then we'll take the honey supers home with us and uh, extract the, the honey at home. So what you don't want to do is cause a, um, a frenzy here where they're, they're uh, fighting over the honey and attacking each other. Different hives will attack each other if you create a, um, a robbing frenzy. So let's jump into this hive, see what we're looking like.
that. So as I'm going through this honey production hive, I just wanted to make sure that we had eggs and check to see how everything was looking. Let's see if I can give you a shot of the eggs here. So you can see the larva down here on the bottom left, capped brood there. And they kind of just, they get younger and younger as you go out. And in these cells here, I'm trying to see if I can get you a shot with my big head out of the way. These cells here, there's eggs in the bottom. Hoping the camera's picking that up. Down in the bottom. I should glow at you. Anyway, various uh, stages on here. This side may be a little bit easier to see. Let's see here. Down here in the bottom, uh, middle right, some larva, cap brood, all kind of different ages going on there. In the bottom right down there in those cells, you ought to be able to see some eggs shining back at you. There we go. Right in the center, you can see those. So. Anyway, I just thought I'd share that with you real quick while I had the shot. I wanted to show you guys the pollen that, that they're bringing in. You see the bee right there with his head? Where is he? It's really hard to see on film, but there he is. Okay, see? See his pollen sacs right there? He's got... Some kind of red pollen I've never seen before. I saw a couple of them in here today with that uh, red pollen on their legs. Red, kind of orange looking pollen. You can see some down in the cell there too. So, I, mean, I thought that would be pretty interesting to share. Never really noticed that color before.
guys. So this is the results of this year's honey crop. As you can see, we actually got 10 supers full of honey. I know somebody's counting right now and I say, hey, I see 11. Well, one of them only has one frame in it. So we ended up with 10 supers full of honey, which is not the best in the world, but you know, we'll take it. We're grateful to have anything that we have, that we get. We also have uh, five supers of honey that we're gonna send back to the yard. So you gotta be really careful whenever you're pulling honey to make sure that you, um, that's exactly what I'm trying to show right there. <laughs> you gotta make sure that you have the right, um, the right type of honey. So like if you have honey that's uh, not dry enough, if it's not quite capped, all the way, there's a certain percentage, I think it's 25%. So I'll show you some of the stuff that we, we didn't take real quick. Uh, you can see right here on, on this frame of honey, you see how a lot of it is capped. So that may be passable. You can see some down here in the bottom here that's not quite capped all the way. So although we'd look at that and say, yeah, we might take that look at the other side of the frame you can see how much of it is not capped so this is an example of a frame that's full of honey but we don't want to use this it can actually uh, cause the, the rest of the honey that we have to ferment so this is uh, an example of a frame that we reject we'll put it back on the beehives and see if they can get that dried out before uh, this winter here's an example of a frame that you'd like to see so uh, this one has more of, uh, so there's a little bit of uncapped honey here, but the majority of it is capped. So this is what we're looking for here. And yeah, we're not willing to take the chance and ruin our honey crop by taking some of this stuff here. So, so that's what we got to work with right now. We're gonna jump on in to the extraction process. So we got the extractor set up. We're getting a couple things set up, got everything washed and cleaned. So um, I'll take you in another clip and show you exactly how we extract it and uh, how we get it into the honey bottles. Okay, let me walk you through the process real quick. So the first thing that you got to do is get the cappings off. So what we'll do is we'll run a serrated uh, knife all the way down here to remove the cappings. We also have a little capping pick that we can use for some of them that maybe don't stick out far enough. So these will be an example of some that will be difficult to use the, the uh, knife on. We may have to use a little pick to open these up. Once we get those open, we'll, we'll be using this where you can set the frame on it. And you can use this little cap, this capping knife. This is the knife that I was saying. You take it and you go down the side here like this and as you slide down it removes the cappings the cappings will then fall into this bucket here and then we'll we'll try and get the honey out of the bucket later on so that's the, that's the knife that we're going to use to remove them this is the little pick that you can use to uh, open the cells open a little bit further if maybe they're not built out far enough and then you'll use your extractor so you remove the little safety guards here you'll put your frames in here that have been had the caps removed you'll put your frames in so this is a four framer right here and then you'll spin it and as you spin it the honey will fly off to the sides fly off to the sides here and go down into the bowl once it comes out of there there's a little port right there do you see it mm -mm. So, oh yeah, I see. Okay, so right there is where the honey will come out of this honey gate, and it'll go in through here through the strainer. It'll catch all the particles and different things like that, and then it'll go into this bucket. So once it goes into this bucket, we've got it closed up, and we can uh, put it into little honey bottles um, from from this point from this bucket here. So this is a really important process here to to extract it filter it and then put it into a, a bucket that we can use later to put them into those little one pound bottles that we we give away and sell them in so the important thing here is to make sure that everything is food grade so you want to make sure all the buckets and things are food grade everything that you're doing got an extra bucket there and our capping bucket it's all food grade stuff you all want to keep everything clean as you can 
and food grade material. So I'll try to set it up and capture a little bit of us doing that. I just thought I'd go through the process real quick. Okay, so I want to try to show you how we remove the caps off the, one of these frames. You just take your knife, kind of slide it along the edge. You can see how the honey starts to come off because the caps are removed. And you just slide it down nice and easy. Unless it's like hard. All the cappings fall into there. And you can see how you got some left right here. So you hand me your pick. So you use your pick to break some more of these open. So this does a lot more damage to the cells than the knife does, but it works it works just the same. See how this one's not built out quite as much here, so I may have to use more of the the pick than I will of the knife. Don't you want to leave some honey or are these all like kind of the dead hives? These are not dead hives. Rusty, you're going to get stung. Yeah, I don't care. So then we'll take the honey and stick it into the extractor. And we'll grab another one of these. We'll do it over over and over again. You start spinning. So you can see how the extractor works. It spins the honey. The honey flies off against the wall. You can see it down there at the bottom. It'll fill up the little bottom and start coming out here. And it'll go through the screen right here into the bucket. Now we can use the gate valve down here later to fill up the uh, one gallon honey bottles that we have. Put that back on and set you back up. Okay guys, so we had to shut this all down. Um, so my intention was to not uh, try to get the honey at the farm because the bees would be attracted to it, right? And then it'd come over to us and kind of get in our way and give us trouble. So we went several miles away and there must be a hive around here somewhere because uh, the amount of bees that showed up is just crazy. So we extracted a little bit, and then as we kind of got really got underway, we just got overran by these bees. So that's just um, probably a third of what's here. We cleaned up as quick as we could, cleaned up the extractor, got everything kind of cleaned up as fast as we could, try to wrap these hives where the bees couldn't get back in there. And uh, you can see how aggressive they're they're going after this honey. So 
unbelievable. And I'll show you real quick over here where we kind of put the hives that we were going to return to the form. And uh, the bees are just crazy. So there must be at least one big colony around here. Because all these bees didn't come with us. We emptied all the hives out for the most part. And you can see how aggressive they are right there. They're just fighting over some of the spilled honey. So there's definitely a dearth going here. And there's a big robbing frenzy. You can see where some of the honey spilt in the trailer that we were using. Anyway, so we'll figure this out. Maybe tomorrow we'll have to take it inside the honey house to uh, do some extracting. Anyway, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Right, guys. So overall, not a bad day. We've got all the five deeps that we had that weren't quite full put back on these hives. Just wanted to do a little experiment and see if they would... Uh, you know, continue to fill them out. Even though it's going to be some of the goldenrod honey. Uh, we'll see what we're going to do with that. So some of them were really heavy and nearly complete. Some of them were a little bit light. So we'll give the bees another shot, another couple weeks to uh, fill those up. And we'll pull them off and just uh, see what happens. Normally I feed it all back to the bees. Just open feed it a couple hundred feet away. I wanted to see this year if they would, you know, be able to fill it back all up and and be something that we could utilize. So we had to shut it down at home because there must be a colony around my house somewhere. <laughs> As we started extracting, things just got out of hand and we had to shut it all down. So, ouch. These are stinging my hands now. They do not like the camera. Okay, well, I'll see you guys next week. All right, guys, so it's been a few days since we started extracting the honey. Ran into a couple of issues there, but we were able to do it in the afternoons. And so now we've got all the honey extracted. We've got them into food grade barrels. Helps to have those little honey gates on them. Uh, we've got all of the cappings. I've got them in here draining. So we're trying to get the honey out of there. So it's going through the filter into a catch bucket there. I've got all this set up with our labeled bottles here. So we can take our bottles, use the honey gate, fill our bottles up. And then we've got our caps right here. And um, we'll see how much, how much honey we get. We've got several of these buckets to go through.
right, guys. So we ended up with just a little over 200 pounds of honey this year. So uh, not as good as we've done in the past, but it's a decent year. and We'll take it. Uh, so this is the logical conclusion of the 2022 beekeeping series. I'm not really sure if we're going to do uh, videos again in 2023. Um, maybe we will. Maybe some shorter videos, something like that. Um, maybe specific topics. Something that we see or that we learn on the farm that we want to share with others. Uh, let us know if you want to see some more videos in 2023 or if there's some specific topics that you want to cover. Thanks again for uh, coming on this journey with us. We really appreciate you and uh, look to see you in the future.